Our second gold medalist is Syed Shahabuddin. He's from the City College of New York, and he'll be talking with us about electrochemical properties of gold and p-dot-coated neural probe electrodes for brain-computer interfaces. His mentor is Professor Jeff Zahn from Biomedical Engineering. So what you're watching is a paralyzed woman suffering from spinal cord injury. She's controlling a mechanical arm to reach for a bottle, grasp it, and carefully bring it towards herself, all just by thinking about it. So the way we move our limbs is by first formulating a thought in the form of electrical signal. Those signals travel down our spinal cord and to our limbs, and that triggers movement. If you're paralyzed, however, you still formulate those same signals, but they just don't reach your limbs because of damage in the spinal cord. With brain-computer interface technology, those signals can be picked up by electrodes, processed through a computer, and can be used to control mechanical prosthetics. So currently, there are three means of which we can acquire a brain signal. The first and least invasive is an EEG, where electrodes are placed on the surface of your scalp. However, since there's multiple barriers between the electrode and the signal of interest, like your skin, your skull, etc., it offers the lowest resolution. Intracortical probes are implanted in the cortex of your brain, which, yes, it deems them the most invasive, but it allows you to detect signals from individual neurons, giving them the highest resolution. And it's that level of resolution that you need when it comes to controlling fine motor function, like moving your fingers or grabbing an object, as you've seen in the video. The downside is that many probes in the market are a lot stiffer than the brain. And because of that, your body sees them as foreign invaders and sends immune cells to encapsulate them, leading to a degradation of signal quality over time. Our lab has developed a multi-layer fabrication approach, which results in smaller, more flexible probes. This study, comparing the size of the probe with its immune response, shows that our probes perform best in mitigating these immune, these immune responses. And although that's great, the signal quality still needs to be strengthened to acquire long-lasting recording potential. So since our probes are fabricated in layers, it results in a gap being formed between the electrode and the surface of the probe where signal is being detected. My goal for the summer was to coat two conductive materials, gold and PDOT, onto the surface of the electrode with the goal of increasing its surface area and bringing the surface of the probe closer to the neurons. So to deem the success of the plating, the in vitro signal quality was first measured and compared pre and post plating. Scanning electron microscopy images were then taken to analyze the structure of the electrodes. And lastly, probes with optimal coating surfaces were chosen to be implanted in mice and their in vivo signal quality was assessed. So here are images of the electrode region of the probes. The first image is an uncoated probe for reference, and the other two are coated with gold at varying time points. From the graphs on the right, you can see that the signal quality definitely increases after plating. In comparing these two images, you can see that the one up top shows a more even, a more uniform plating, which makes it better suitable for implantation. So a gold-plated probe was implanted in the mouse, and you can see its brain signals here. The blue is the raw signal, and the purple is the same signal, but filtered to isolate neuron activity. So just looking at the left side of the graph, all you see is just random noise, which doesn't really mean anything. And that's all we've been seeing from past implantations of uncoated probes. But for the first time with these coated probes, we were able to see neuron activity signified by these spikes shown here. So for results on PDOT coated electrodes and more in vivo data, please stop by my poster, number 17 in the International Lounge. <laughs> the, <laughs> the, a future approach of this study would be to translate these single electrode experiments to our multi-electrode probes with varying electrode depths. And hopefully this can bring us one step closer in giving paralyzed patients a better quality of life. Thank you.